oh yeah, we're collecting all your information, but we promise we won't look at it. You know, so it's harder and harder to believe them when they don't tell the truth when they testify. They also come to us and they say, well, terrorists can't be apprehended in a fashion consistent with the Bill of Rights. Well, under cross-examination, that turns out not to be true. Who knows what to believe anymore? Even if no abuse of phone records has occurred so far, we must limit government power to, pre to prevent abuse in the future. The intelligence director maintains he lied in the open hearing because it was open to the public and the information was classified. He tells us that he testified in the least untruthful way. Anybody accept that? The least untruthful way. As Americans, we don't deserve the least untruthful way from the people we pay for who work for us. We have a right to the truth, we deserve the truth, and we demand the truth from our officials. Are the people clapping, not that aren't clapping, are y'all from the intelligence community? <laughs> I'm asked repeatedly, is Snowden a hero or a villain? Now there's no, there's no... <laughs> I'm sort of of mixed minds, I know some of you have decided this. But there's no doubt that his legacy will be clouded, you know, by his perch in Russia. No great repository of civil liberties. I agree with critics that say you can't let everybody just decide when to leak classified information. Snowden will in all likelihood face punishment if he returns. But I don't agree with those who argue that he should be hanged or shot on sight. Snowden's leak should not be seen, they say, oh, it shouldn't be seen as civil disobedience because he didn't stick around for punishment. Now, one can argue degrees of bravery or whether you would stick around or not. Thoreau faced a day in jail, and he was considered to be a civil disobedient. Martin Luther King faced 33 days in jail. He was a civil disobedient. But Snowden faces either death or life in prison. I don't believe yet to, be, to commit civil disobedience that it requires martyrdom. History will decide, is he a hero, who is hero, and who is villain. Clapper lied in the name of security. Snowden told the truth in the name of privacy. The debate over the leaker, though, shouldn't be caught up just in personalities. It shouldn't make us lose track of the real issue. How does the Fourth Amendment apply in the digital age? To me, this is a profound constitutional question. Can a single warrant be applied to millions of Americans' phone records, emails, credit card statements? When you sign a privacy agreement, with your phone company or with your internet provider, don't you retain a privacy interest in those records? The Fourth Amendment is very clear. Warrants must be issued by a judge. Warrants must be specific to the individual, must have your name on it if they want your records. And a single warrant for millions of Americans' phone records hardly sounds specific to the individual. Warrants are supposed to be based on evidence of probable cause. I'm not up here arguing against people searching you. If the judge says they have probable cause that you committed a crime, I'm fine with that. I'm not against the NSA per se, but I am for the process, the due process of law to protect your rights. Generalized warrants that don't name an individual and seek to get millions of records, it goes against the very fabric of the Fourth Amendment. Some say that James Otis his protest against generalized warrants at the time of our revolution was really the spark that got things going. I find it ironic that the first African-American president, president has, without compunction, allowed this vast exercise of raw power by the NSA. Certainly, J. Edgar Hoover's illegal spying on Martin Luther King and others in the civil rights movement should give us all pause. Now, if President Obama were here, he would say he's not J. Edgar Hoover, which is certainly true. But power must be restrained because no one knows who will next hold that power. As Madison put it, if government were always comprised of angels, we wouldn't need restraint. But as we all know, government is often not comprised of angels. The president claims, well, the NSA program, it's been approved by 15 judges. 
Well, yeah, right. Fifteen judges, most of them ruling in secret, where nobody had a lawyer on both sides of the equation. The FISA court is a court where the defendant gets no attorney. The debate is shrouded in secrecy. In the FISA court, the NSA can say whatever they want, and they are not cross-examined. A secret court is not a real court. We must take a stand and demand an end to secret courts. This battle for your rights must take place in the light of day. As we speak, my attorneys are battling for a hearing in open court in Washington, D.C. We have already we have a lawsuit to try to prevent this from happening and to get a decision from the Supreme Court. Only the Supreme Court can legitimately decide if government can access all your phone records with a single warrant without suspicion. Everyone in this room owns a cell phone. So I'm not fighting for just me or for just one political party. I would do the same whether it were a Republican president or a Democrat president. This is an important issue that goes beyond party politics. I say what you read or what you send in your email or your text messages is none of their damn business. Now, they say they're not listening to your phone calls. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But last week, we found out that the CIA illegally searched Senate computers. Diane Feinstein, she's in charge of the committee. She gave a big speech in, on the Senate floor saying they're illegally taking our work product. They're looking at our computers, and they have now taken stuff off the computers that we thought could have been information for the American people. I'm going to fight them on this. I told her and complimented her. She's from another party. I went up to her and immediately and said, great speech. Everybody's talking about it because I don't see this as a partisan issue. I hope she will stand up, not let the CIA push her around, not let the NSA push her around. I'm going to fight them on this. No one, no one should be allowed to invade your privacy. That's why I'm announcing today that when I return to Washington, I will push for a select committee styled after the church committee that investigated the abuses of power by the intelligence community in the 70s. It should be bipartisan. It should be independent and wide-reaching. It should have full power to investigate and reform those who spy on us in the name of protecting us. It should watch the watchers. Our liberties are slipping away from us. When Hugh Latimer said, let this be an episode that will not be soon forgotten, he became a human candle against tyranny and intolerance. Americans still have a torch that's burning, figuratively or otherwise, in New York Harbor. We should never let that flame of liberty go out. On occasion, we've let our guard down, particularly in times of war, in times of fear. We've succumbed. We have, as Roger Waters put it, traded our heroes for ghosts, exchanged a walk-on part in a war for a lead role in a cage, or as Franklin put it, traded our liberty for security. I think we've been too lax in guarding our privacy. Look at how we travel now. Look at the personal privacy and dignity we've lost. When you slog through the airports, ask yourself who's winning. Harvard Law School professor Noah Feldman asked the question in a very visual way. He says, the next time you go through airport security, the next time they tell you to put your hands over your head and hold that vulnerable position for seven seconds, no, hun, just a little bit higher, ask yourself, is this the posture of a free man? The question before us is, will we live as men and women? Will we cower and will we give up on our liberty? I, for one, will fight on because I believe that your rights are inalienable, inseparable, inextinguishable. And I hope everyone, everyone with a cell phone, every American will fight for your privacy and for the right of every American to be left alone. I hope you will stand with me and take a, take a stand for liberty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your super male vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Conservative activist Larry Clayman uh, and the ACLU have also filed similar lawsuits against the NSA and both resulted in either failure or a stayed ruling. Uh, what makes you think that you'll have any more success than these groups that have tried before you? I am supportive of all the other lawsuits, so it isn't exclusive that mine is the best, but it is slightly different. The ACLU lawsuit was ruled against. The judge either threw it out or said that the program was constitutional. The Clayman suit is in the same court that, my, that mine will go to, and the uh, judges previously ruled it unconstitutional, stayed the ruling, and I think it will be appealed. So I think the claim in suit is still active. Ours is going to the same court because it has a similar subject. Our case is slightly different, and we think for some legal reasons uh, that it may have a chance of going all the way to the Supreme Court. To me, it's not so much that my case has to go, but I think a case needs to go to the Supreme Court because currently many people believe that the Fourth Amendment doesn't apply at all. They think that the reason why you can give a single warrant to Verizon is that you don't own those, those records. I think they're jointly held. I think if you sign a privacy agreement, Verizon agrees not to tell your neighbor who you're calling. So they kind of acknowledge that. I think it's acknowledging that you still have an interest in those records. But to me, the most important thing is, and there's at least, we think, four or five Supreme Court justices that have indicated that in this digital age, think about it, it's a lot different than 1975. That's when the last case, uh, Smith versus Maryland, was held on records. And it's also different. That was about one suspect's uh, phone tap. We're now talking about 300 million Americans' phones. So I think it's a big deal, and it is different than what we've ever had before. So I'm, I'm hoping that we will get all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, so earlier, you condemned uh, Director of National Intelligence, uh, James Clapper, for allegedly uh, lying in front of Congress. Uh, you said he's very explicitly uh, broken the law. Um, does that mean that you think he should be sent to prison? I think he should be. Well, you don't get sent to prison until you're found guilty, so we should have a trial. He deserves a trial. Um, but the interesting thing is, is I'm not an outlier on this in the sense that I think seven uh, members of the Intelligence Committee or Judiciary Committee in the House have signed a letter saying the same thing. And I think it hurts us because we do have to rely on some things being secret. And it's an extraordinary power. It's in a power to capture people incarcerate people. It's even a power to kill people. So that power 
needs to be overseen, and they have to be honest with us. If the people in charge of the intelligence community are not being honest to Congress, and they're actually spying on Congress, I have grave doubts about 